Tesla shares are down as GM announces its new zero-emission engine, which is expected to make electric and internal combustion vehicles obsolete. This radical technology is considered the next revolution in the automotive world and will drive towards an eco-friendly future of cars. GM has been searching for an alternative to EVS for years, leading them to the all-new compressed air technology. Compressed air has been limited in use since the 19th century, but in the early 2010s, French car manufacturer PJO saw potential in combining compressed air with internal combustion engines into a hybrid technology that retains the eco-friendliness of a regular hybrid without a battery. Although prototypes didn't move far from the testing stage, it sparked interest from the rest of the automotive industry, including GM, who saw the potential of compressed air vehicles. GM realized that in order to compete with conventional internal combustion engines and the growing popularity of electric cars, EVs, compressed air technology needed to be further developed. Together with internal combustion engines and electric vehicles, they started investigating and creating compressed air technologies. Because compressed air vehicles use specially made pneumatic engines, they operate differently from both EVS and standard engines. These engines are driven by springs and have pistons that resemble those used in gasoline-powered engines. Pneumatic motors increase the pressure inside the chamber by adding air, which pushes the piston to its maximum length without exploding. Compared to conventional engines, compressed air vehicles can operate more effectively and efficiently thanks to this method. Because they don't use rare earth minerals and produce zero pollution, compressed air engines are a possible replacement for conventional combustion engines. They thus provide a financially viable remedy for the environmental problems that conventional combustion engines encounter. Because compressed air engines run at lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, they require less strong, hardened steel or aluminum, which lowers their manufacture costs. GM created this idea in an effort to accelerate the compressed air engine development process. Furthermore, because compressed air engines don't need rare earth minerals, they are less harmful to the environment than conventional engines. Even still, the majority of the electricity used in electric vehicles is still produced using fossil fuels, which makes them less environmentally friendly. Overall, compressed air engines offer numerous benefits over traditional combustion engines. This makes them more environmentally friendly and economically feasible to produce in larger quantities. Oh, and it goes without saying which the running costs for compressed air engines have simply unmatched. Compressed air is significantly less expensive than electricity or fuel and is also much easier to obtain. Not to mention which these engines are 100% future-proof because they utilize pressurized air, which is unchanged structurally following it exits the chamber. Even though they seem powerful, compressed air engines had a few unavoidable problems that prevent them from being developed and used more widely. In the past, using compressed air engines resulted in a number of situational and at times borderline useless problems. The first issue is that squeezed air engines have incredibly underpowered because pressurized air is a very low energy density, which significantly lowers their potency. Additionally, because they have light components and don't produce high amounts of pressure, their torque is extremely lacking. Because the engine must run at a high RPM given that it is entirely mechanical, this renders them far less practical in everyday life. The biggest problem with compressed air engines is that they are incredibly inefficient. While this might seem unnecessary given that compressed air is essentially free, it couldn't be further from the truth as the majority of prototype compressed air vehicles that are being developed have a range of only 140 kilometers. Additionally, the engine does not use liquid as its primary propellant, which makes introducing lubricators into the engine more difficult than on internal combustion engines. Which is not more than 100 miles, this implies that you must use it up continuously in the first place, that you couldn't dependably go on even rather quick trips, let alone lengthy ones, and that there is the safety issue. The majority of prototypes relied on standard steel air tanks to store pressurized air because there was no better option available. It meant that the already weak car would become even more so because of its added weight, and it would also be more prone to explosions when the tanks got hit because, after all, you were sitting on a lot of pressurized gas. 
Nevertheless, GM has been working tirelessly to eliminate these obvious problems with the technology, and they have been rather good at it. To start, the addition of fresh high-press air tanks has addressed the vehicle's power issue. With the additional compression provided by these high-pressure tanks, the cylinder pressure rises and GM's innovative compressed air prototype achieves performance values that are almost identical to those of conventional gasoline engines. Furthermore, GM has discovered a way to increase the vehicle's range by converting the chassis into one large compressed air reservoir. However, that requires the vehicle to be designed specifically with compressed air engines in mind. Sure, the torque isn't quite there yet, but it's still powerful enough for a typical commuter vehicle. When will this technology be implemented? That is a very complex question, but there is a good chance that these engines will go into mass production in the coming years because, as can be concluded, GM has really spent itself in making this engine a reality. This includes specific additional support of, or even the use of composite materials like fiber-reinforced thermoplastics. This allows the vehicle to maintain a particularly low weight, while also being more secure than using regular high-press armored vehicles, as crashing and bursting the reservoir is unlikely to lead to an explosion. It would be naive of us to think that GM is doing this out of the kindness of its heart as it is not. Instead, they are constantly looking for solutions to many existing problems, as well as are incredibly dedicated to developing a truly fantastic product that could revolutionize the automotive world entirely. Additionally, the general physical familiarity and resemblance to internal combustion engines enable GM to create such engines more quickly than if they were to do it from scratch. GM is searching for a means to establish a new vehicle market because it is fully aware that the days for internal combustion engines are limited and that they currently do not have a strong presence in the EV market. As good as this sounds, it's not the first time an established brand has tried incorporating compressed air into vehicles. About 10 years ago, PJO created a hybrid version of the PJO 2008 crossover, but rather than using electric energy, the vehicle combined a conventional engine with compressed air. The outcome was a powertrain that merged the horsepower and torque of an internal combustion engine, along with the ecological aspect of compressed air. This would allow PJO to gain an edge over other car manufacturers while also rendering both internal combustion and EVS obsolete to further secure their hypothetical place as the leaders of the new automotive age. The air engine powertrain, which could achieve 120 meters per gallon, was abandoned soon after its conception due to PJO's inability to find it profitable enough. The reasons for this decision are unknown, but it is believed to be related to large oil companies as such a large-scale engine could potentially run them out of business. This is not the first time oil companies have done this. In the mid-1990s, Stanley Allen Meyer developed the water fuel cell, which could run a car exclusively on water. After going public with his invention, Meyer was pressured by large oil firms to quit his development and admitted to being a fraud. Despite this, Mayer resisted and continued fighting oil giants while seeking funding for further development. On March 20, 1998, Mayer and his brother attended a dinner with two Belgian investors. Shortly after leaving a restaurant, Mayer, a man who had been poisoned by two merchants, passed away. When he died, he was working on a car and water fuel cell prototypes. It is thought of that the car and prototypes vanished from his garage because oil firms are avaricious and will do anything to keep their profits high, no matter how beneficial it is for the environment. GM should keep working on engines in complete secrecy in order to prevent ending up like Stanley Allen or Puma's hybrid.